Hi there and welcome to another video by Revising Rubies. In this video we'll be discussing whether Anki really is a good way of studying, or if it's more effort than it's worth. Stick around to find out. If you're new here, my name is Hussain, and I'm a medical student studying in London. Today we'll be looking at some of the scientific evidence behind Anki, and if students should be using it as a way of revising. If you want to jump around, then look in the description box down below for timestamps. In this first section, we're going to be discussing if Anki really helps with studying. If you're not sure about what Anki is, then look in the description for some articles and resources where you can learn more about it. I'm not going to be discussing it in any depth in this video. So, does Anki really help with studying? The short answer is yes. And the long answer is kind of mostly yes, but it depends how you use it. There are people who say that Anki doesn't really work for them. And in reality, this is just a lack of them understanding how to use it. You would never say that a screwdriver is at fault for not being able to weld metal together. That's because a screwdriver is a tool and you use it for what you need to use it for. For a screwdriver, you need to know two things. Firstly, what it's used for and secondly, how you're going to be using it. So what it's going to be used for is screwing in a screw. And secondly, how you're going to be using it is you're going to put your hand onto the screw, you're going to turn it slightly clockwise until the screw is fully inside. These same two rules should be applied for Anki. You need to know what you're going to be using it on, and that's going to be learning facts for a long period of time. And you're going to need to know how to use it. And that includes things like how to make a flashcard, how to use the different features of Anki, ensuring that you use Anki every single day. These are two different skills and two different things that you need to know. Now returning back to the original question, is Anki any good at helping you study? Well, it's amazing at helping you learn facts over a long period of time. And so therefore it's excellent for things like science and, and factual based courses like medicine. Unfortunately, it cannot really help in subjects like English and history where a large amount of writing skill is needed. So. Now that you know that Anki does work with studying and it does help, how much does it actually help? Well, that's what we're going to discuss in the next section. Does Anki improve exam performance? So even though Anki is a relatively new resource that was only created as recently as 2006, there are some scientific studies which have attempted to use it. For example, in this 2015 study, they queried all their medical students in their institution about the USMLE Step 1 exam and they asked the two students about the different methods that they use for studying. On average, the study found that students who used Anki for approximately 25 weeks, which is around 6 months, ended up learning about 5,000 flashcards. Each additional 1,700 flashcards was associated with one additional point on the Step 1 exam. 1700 flashcards for one point doesn't seem like a lot. However, when you take into the fact that this is an average and that some students would not be using Anki very effectively, some would be maybe using it once a week or once a month, you then come to realize that for the people who were using it effectively, they probably didn't need to know 1700 flashcards to get that one additional point. Therefore, as you can see, if you want to do better in your exams, learn more flashcards and learn them well. In this next section, we're going to be asking the question, why actually is Anki so good? Anki uses a technique called active recall and space repetition. I've made a whole video about this, which you can check out here, but I'm just going to quickly summarize. Active recall is when you test yourself. It's excellent for helping you solidify memories in your brain and is proven to be four times more effective than rereading a passage. Space repetition is the process of spacing out your learning over a period of time. This means reviewing your material at increasing intervals. For example, after one week, after one month, and then after three months. This is excellent for remembering things in the long term. When you combine active recall and space repetition though, that's where you really find the true benefit of these techniques. And Anki combines both of them together in this one software. And that's one of the reasons why Anki is praised so highly by medical students around the world. 
In this next section, we're going to be talking about one study which looked at how doctors used Anki. It was a 2019 study and showed that there was an increase of 10% in test scores after using Anki in between two lectures. It's important to note that the participants of the study didn't actually use Anki every single day like you're supposed to. They just did Anki on the first day of the lecture and on the last day. Then afterwards, they compared the people who used Anki and who people who didn't use Anki. The people who used Anki ended up doing, doing better in their test. So now let's discuss if Anki is really that good for learning languages. In one 2016 study, a 72-year-old lady with a type of language problem called aphasia used Anki for just under two years. The scientists found that she was able to remember a significantly more number of flashcards than the normal program that people with her disease would undergo. And although this is only one lady who participated in this study, it does show that there is a significant possibility that Anki is well and truly made for languages. And in fact, Anki was originally designed for language use. Now, we've talked a lot about how much you can learn with Anki. However, is there a limit to how much you can memorize in your life? Is there a limit to your brain power? Well, one piece of research done in the 1980s presented a student who engaged in a task that involved recalling a random sequence of digits. So the scientists would provide a random sequence of digits and they would have to recall them. Over the course of 20 months, the student went from being able to remember seven digits in a row to an incredible 80 digits. This memory is comparable to those of memory champions. The study also points out that this student was just a completely normal student and had no memory training beforehand and was not memory gifted in any other way other than just the fact that they practiced over these 20 months. These results show that memory is a skill and it can be improved, even if you are an average student. If you want to find out what the actual studies looked at and what some of the limitations of the studies were, then be sure to check out the blog post I made, which is linked in the description box down below. You'll also find plenty of other articles on how to revise and how to study as a medical student at revisingrubies.com. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you're new as there's going to be new videos like this out every single week.